What is up, FIFA faithful? Bearhams here, welcoming you to the first episode of Best of the Rest. Every year, extra teams from smaller leagues are sectioned off in the Rest of the World category, where they're seldom played and only used as fodder for various UEFA competitions. In this series, those teams will be placed in their own league and will battle it out for Champions, Europa, and Conference League spots. We will be taking over the Cypriot side, Apoel, the lowest rated of the 16 teams, and will be given the task in turning these Mediterranean minnows into the Megalodons of Europe. When researching past Apoel sides, they relied heavily on talent from Brazil, Portugal, and Greece. And in keeping with the theme of best of the rest, all players must be from smaller countries like Cyprus. No longer can Apple rely on players from those powerhouse countries for star talent. Countries like Moldova, Latvia, and Estonia, amongst others, will be the lifeblood for this club as they look to top their 2011 Champions League quarterfinal finish and win the whole damn thing. Another goal of mine in this save is to have as many players from Cyprus as possible. And right now we have a short list of all the current players from Cyprus in the game that are not with our team at the moment. A lot of youngsters and a lot of veterans that could help this team not only in the beginning stages if we do sign them then, but later down the line. I do appreciate FIFA's efforts to add more rest of the world teams to the game. However, we could only whittle it down to 16 and it's seven different countries in this tiny league. We have Olympiakos, Sparta Praha, AB Split, AEK Athens, Apoel, CSKA Moscow, Ferenc Travosi, Lokomotiv Moscow, PAOK, Shakhtar Donetsk, Slavia Praha, Spartak Moscow, Victoria Pilsen, Panathiakos, Dynamo Kiev, and Dynamo Zagreb. One pipeline we are going to get players from is the youth academies, and you know, with FIFA, and if you bought the game early, you get that homegrown talent. We do have Soren Radu, six foot six cam. You could turn him into a striker. Five star skill moves, five star weak cut. But because he's from Romania, and Romania does have a national team, we have to get rid of him. Yeah. A great player like that, a fine specimen of athleticism, gone in the flash of an eye. So now we just have to start with Christoph Krejci from Slovakia, 57 overall, 78 to 94 potential. The future starts with him. For the scouting network, it'll be on a three month rotation going to all of those smaller countries. So we have Barnabas Rokus going to Lithuania. We have Claudius Zarins going to Latvia, his home country. And then we have David Ardolano going to Moldova. Despite having a healthy roster size of 29 players, we can't use a decent chunk of them. For instance, Simon Skife is from Italy. We also have Facundo Zabala from Argentina. There's another Argentine in here in De Vicente, amongst other big country players, which means we're gonna have to rely on players that aren't as good. Now, thankfully, we do have a lot of them from Cyprus and from Georgia. There's a high amount of Georgian players in this team, not from the state, but from the country. And uh, it'll take time for me to figure out how to pronounce their last names. I know Dajvili, that is easier to say than others, but this is what the team is gonna look like for maybe the first episode or so. In terms of board objectives, uh, I'd have to say they're pretty reasonable. The most critical is domestic success, and they want us to avoid finishing in the bottom part of the league. I think that's due, but we could easily get 14th or 15th, and in the long run, within four seasons, win the whole damn thing. I think that's doable as well, because that was my goal even before looking at this list. For the first game of this save, we will be taking on Yevon Kanaplyanka and Shakhtar Donetsk. Apologies if it's a little hard to see the jerseys as one is yellow and one is orange. I, I mean, I can make sense of it, so I think you guys can as well. Now with this save, I want it to be a hybrid of my usual saves in the past, the U-Squad Legends type saves where it's a bunch of regens as well as like a club and country save, one that uh, is popularized by Docs. Okorashvili centers that through to Ephraim, so maybe something here. Ball is through. Kvitaya takes a header. And we'll just glance the netting. It's our first decent chance so far this game. That's a nice slide through to Moraes, who does take the shot, and that will go past Michael. So we'll beat Shakhtar getting the scoring started. Oh, 
Whistler's a shot from distance and good grief. Already two goals in 30 minutes. And once again, it is Moraes. Gets himself a brace. I am well aware this is going to be a tough ask for a save, especially when you're trying to get players mostly from Cyprus. And a lot of them are not up to snuff in terms of quality. But we're going to have to figure out a way to integrate them into the side and hopefully turn them into world beaters at some point. Just a couple ticks left before the half. One last chance for Shakhtar to possibly get a third goal. It's Dodo in the corner. Wow, doing a great job fending off Wheeler. So we'll get a cross. Michael will catch it, and that will do it for the opening half. We do concede two goals. It's the first game at home, GSB Stadium. Not a good start. Already a couple ticks into the second half. I would like to mention that Shakhtar Donetsk was actually the first team I was considering for best of the rest. I thought it would be cool with that angle of having the Ukraine national side into the game this year, turn it into a quasi club and country as well. Kristoff Krejci, the youngster, getting his first run around. About 25 minutes to prove a point. But, oh wow, Mores looking for that second goal, and he will eventually get it. A good first stop by Michael using his dome to head it away, but he headed it straight to Mores. And that man has a hat trick. Maybe a chance here for something. There's a nice ball to Kvilataya. Kvilataya fending one guy off. Fends another. And Dongla, open shot, takes it, but skies it over. Oh, it's a good pass through. Another shot and another goal. Fourth one for Shakhtar on the evening. It is Tete. We have to go near post on that one. Krejci tries to get a header to it, and that will do it for our first 90 minutes. It was a struggle throughout the entire evening. Samores, the man was a thorn in our side, getting three goals. Since the center back line is so barren with talent, we have signed Stelios Andreu, 64 overall center back. We'll take a deeper look into his stats. Okay, Savage is better, but we need something a lot better than Caro, and Andreu is the answer. Decent stats, physical 72, pace 72, defending. Ah, needs to get a little better in the future. I think he'll be perfect. 18 years of age, a youngster. Got him on a five-year deal. And yeah, I expect him being with the side for the entirety of the save. Traveling to the Czech Republic to take on Sparta Praha. We have switched the formation from that modified 4-1-3-2 to a 4-3-3 in Andreu's debut game with Apoel. I mean, we score a goal with Ndongola, but still lose. One thing about this save, it'll be a mixture of simulated and played games. As you saw in the last bit, we did lose against Sparta Praha, and now we're back at home in Cyprus against Dynamo Zagreb. The same formation. We actually draw this time in Dongla with a brace in only five minutes. The good news is we've started to sell our players from bigger countries. Tomas de Vicente is one of them, and we've gotten 725 euros. The good news is that it is the end of the month, which means we have our monthly scouting reports. And from Moldova, we have Sergio Meccano, as well as Teodor Ionescu. Uh, not looking too good in terms of numbers, but we will sign Teodor. There's a better evaluation and a better overall at the start. Though that potential is a little low, things can change, and we'll look at Sergio a little more later. Next, we do have Barnabas Rokas in Lithuania. Uh, none of these players are popping out at the moment. We'll look at uh, Zukakis, and then for our final scout in Latvia, we have Niklav Vilks, but first we'll go through Niklav Nangs. Nothing to see, nothing to see, nothing to see. Any good numbers here? All oh, perfect. Niklav Vilks, though he's 15 years of age, 49 to 65, 75 to 94 overall with a 525 euro evaluation. Not the best evaluation, but considering we need talent, it's just right. To finish off this opening episode, we will finish off with a game against CSKA Moscow. We have seen this formation work okay off camera with that one point in the last game against Dynamo Zagreb. Now let's see it in action. Nasatsias from distance floats one 
and hits the post holding the net. All right, already liking the start so far for Applewell. We are desperate for a win here to set us apart from the other teams in the bottom half of this table. Oh, that's a nice run by Jagoff. There's a shot from distance, and that will break the deadlock. A nice laser beam to that top right corner. Yeah, we, we still have a lot to work on. No chance here. So we'll go to the striker. Yet again, no goals on camera. This is going to be a work in progress. This is going to be a long-term save. We're still on square one. Before we get into the table, I would like to discuss our squad and some of the moves I would like to make off camera. As you can tell, looking at the age, a lot of youngsters and a lot of players that are probably not going to make it to the first team. So what I'm thinking is putting a couple of these guys on loan. Hopefully they'll get some deals. You know, hopefully they'll have a year off somewhere else and they'll come back stronger. I know with this game with the loans, you get a lot more increase in stats. And I think it will help a lot of these players out, especially players like Krejci, most likely players like Satsuki. Looking at the table, we are nowhere near the top as Olympiakos has a slight edge over Sparta Praha just based on the amount of goals they've scored. And there we are, dead last with a draw to our name. Now, between now and the next episode, I'm going to try my best to transfer in players and loan out the youngsters. Hopefully get some better Cypress players in the lineup and hopefully get some development time for those youngsters. Before I go, I would like to thank you for getting this far into the episode. Any like or comment to this video goes a long way and it's much appreciated. And if you like what you see and want to see more, please like and subscribe. So yes, this will be the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as you're playing it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you for episode two. This has the Bear Hams, and as always, toodaloo.